Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dolly Cam. So we are here in part two of the casting and cleaning of all Biz dolls here at the Doll Artisan Guild Convention in Colorado Springs. In our first video, we weren't able to show you the the, the mold, um, the, the dolls coming out of the mold because they were still a little bit wet, but now they have come out of the mold. We are here with the DAG instructor, Glinda, and she's gonna show us a little bit more about what to do as soon as they come out of the mold and show us a couple of, um, of what's going on. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we are back with Glinda. Hi, this is so cool. You just had a packed house of your last tutorial. It was so awesome. Thank you for um, getting back on with us. So in our first video, we watched you pour the slip into the into mold. The mold. Okay. You poured it into the side. Good. You guys can see that original video on our page. And then we waited about 20 minutes. And then what happens after that? Uh, then you pull the mold apart, okay, like this mold right here. Okay. The beginning, okay. So what we did is we emptied it, okay. And then we pulled the mold apart. And then it became doll parts. And then there's your doll parts right there. Isn't that cool, everybody? This provides, again, so much more insight onto the art of, of the antique dolls that were originally made, you know, 100, 200 years ago. This is so neat. In the same way. They were made the same way. Um, then you look, there's the face of the doll. This is the back. Let me see. This is the... This is the front. Front. And this is the back. So if you look... They come back together. They fit perfectly. So neat. So I saw on, uh, I think this one right here, there is a signature right there. At what point do you put your artist's um, signature? I pull it out of the mold. I would okay. take a stylus or a um, just a, a pen, and then I just write my name or my initials. I do it on the back of this one because I don't want to damage her hair. But I usually will put... GM 2018. Mm -hmm. If somebody does a dollar in a seminar, then they're required to say that it's a dollar to guild seminar and then put the date and time. So they have to be uh, identified so that they're not entering that doll in competition. All right. So and normally on the back of a uh, a head, like a head that would have hair, that was a bigger head, you would stick it in the back on the back. Um, here, so you, you would stick like it in a, the hair, okay? A or something. No, mm -hmm. not, if you had like a jumeau or something, okay. That had no mold. Oh, right, you underneath the wig. Right sure. Here. Okay. So you should be able to easily lift it up and see that it is your reproduction. Right. So usually the name, you know, the insignia, and then the year it should always be. There. That is one thing that we want to make sure that you guys know is that we are out here learning the art of doll making and the artists here, a lot of them do re recreate antique dolls and antique molds, but they sign them, they date them, and it is extremely obvious on them. So they are never, ever, ever passed off as antiques. Exactly. Ever, ever, ever. Right? That's exactly. Glinda? One, we, that's what one of our rules are. So if they're a doll artist and guild, uh, member, that's one of the code of ethics that we ask them to do is just to make sure that they never, ever do anything like that. Right. Because we do, what we're doing is we're learning about dolls, but we're also learning the porcelain art of making dolls. Right. We love it. We love it. It is Sometimes so cool I to be here. On a reproduction doll, it is not nearly as. Um, like we try to make ours so perfect. If you right, look, you're not trying you to make it look like look the antique. The lines right here, you know. And and sometimes when a doll looks so perfect, I will think it's a reproduction right off the bat mm -hmm. because I think, oh my gosh, I know that's perfect. Right. But I mean, sometimes like if you have to think like a jumo, the way a jumo is painted, those people must have painted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, and they look pretty perfect. Right. Too. Exactly. I totally agree. So when these dolls come out and they are in their greenware form, uh -huh. they are a lot bigger than after they, they are. are fired. And if you look, let me just. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take this and show you just how fragile they are. <gasps> oh they, no! <laughs> yeah. That's just raw. That's just clay. And they, so that is so fragile. You have to handle it very, very gently. Right. And, you know, during this stage, they, you know, a lot of times they'll crush it um, and it just gets thrown away. But they, they began the preparation for stringing the doll. So they're deciding if they're going to have it pegged, okay, or they're going to have it strung with, uh, with, with, you know, stringing. This doll doesn't have the holes in it yet. 
So most of the time I would start now as I took it out and I'm using like a straw to make a hole. Uh, depends on the size of it and all this doll. I don't want it so big that it jiggles around. Now that little disc, is that inside the straw or is it rattling it around? Goes, in it's the actually, it is. Sometimes on all this dolls, I, I would probably try to get it out, but um, you know, sometimes on antiques you're going to find little pieces. Of oh, stuff really? Stuff okay. To, but to so it now it's fire. inside the doll. How do you get fire. it out through the legs? It'll, whenever I'm playing, there, it, there, one of them out. just the came out. Disc, yeah. And usually we'll take like pieces of this porcelain and we'll color match paint because it's really important that we paint it true to the antique. Right. So we'll use the actual pieces to, to put the color over on paint. So this doll is going to shrink a tremendous amount because after it is fired, it is this size. Exactly. Look at this! Look at that, everybody. That is that is really actually an important indicator exactly. when we are um, yes. yes when you're it's, when you're trying to authenticate an antique exactly. doll too. And the other thing is to authenticate a doll is this is an antique doll here, and look at the whiteness of the porcelain. Most of the reproduction um, dolls that are made still have a little bit of a yellow tinge. They don't have that gorgeous white 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 that you see in an antique doll so sometimes if i'm trying to decide if it's a an antique or a reproduction the first thing i do is i'm going to look inside that head to make sure i'm going to see how the eyes were set if it was a sleep eye originally that they've set stationary eyes i would think that would be a good indication that it's right. an antique or the whiteness of the porcelain the whiteness of the porcelain mm -hmm. the whiteness of the porcelain it doesn't have this has sort of a yellow you know if you look at it really really close it's a yellower tinge than the antique those those dolls i mean that's what makes those french dolls so beautiful you'll see the light shining through that how white, did they get the through. porcelain so white I, it's like a clay that they use. I think it's clay, uh, kaolin, philstar. Wow. <laughs> there was like a, there's a blend and it was just like, I guess it's the mines. It's a natural right. product. So it's just white. Clay. It's just white, white, white. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this. The part one of the yeah. tutorial with Glinda is on our page. We actually also just added it to YouTube so you can refer back to it. We are here live at the Doll Artist and Guild. little reproductions. There they are. So we are learning so much yes. about doll making and as antique doll lovers, which is what Ruby Lane um, is primarily, we are learning so much about the antiques. It is so cool. We, we usually photograph them. We, we test. If, if somebody buys this mold, we're testing the colors on the white porcelain. So we do technique sheets so that we tell them these are the colors that we would recommend using to get the look of an antique doll. So if you want to learn about porcelain doll making, we have so many tools. So like teach many. Them, yes, wig making. They learn to make wigs, shoes, uh, bodies, porcelain dolls. Um, mostly, most of us like antique reproductions. But there's a lot of people like modern dolls or fantasy dolls. And you're going to be able to see, uh, I guess tomorrow, in our competition room, just the very is probably going to blow you away. And you see how gorgeous, gorgeous right. some of those dolls oh, are. Oh, for sure. That's right. So the Doll Artists and Guild is for people that make uh, make dolls of all kinds or if you just appreciate dolls and you want to learn more about how they are made, it's really open to everybody. Anyone can come on any skill level. There are the most accomplished people here and then there's, if you've well, never come age, before, right? Every a, age. We have a, an award-winning doll maker that still enters every year. And Rachel, you're going to have to interview her. I think she's 96 or 95. And she brings a doll. She enters last year. She wanted top award. Oh, I love and it. And costumes it from top, top to bottom. It's just amazing. So you can be uh, 12 or you can be you can be 12 or 100 and have a great time and learn so much. You guys are so so giving of your um, time and energy and, and uh, talents. Nothing is a secret. Come here and learn all about the doll making at the Doll Artists and Guild conventions. They are so much fun and you can join as well. So Glinda, thank you. We'll chat with you soon. Bye-bye.